What you see, buddy? You find a frog? What you looking for in there? <laughs> He's eating tall grass. He's grazing. That's not as bad as we thought it would be. Yeah, a little bit of wind. Rain's coming in bands. This is what's left of Tropical Depression Berry. But shouldn't count my chickens yet. We still got two solid days of rain. Today's Monday, which means it's time for a shop update. Everything's getting watered real well. Well, hey, that's starting to ripen up. Okay. Good deal. About time. I've got tons of vegetables. Those purple peppers are getting ready. Let's see how our watermelon's doing. Ooh, I can't really see it from this side. There it is. Right there. Not bad. Out to the shop. You're going bye byes this morning. I do love the way, you know, it took a long time because I did every single individual scale on this. I haven't put this on YouTube yet. I've just done some Facebook stuff. So this is one of those big Bass Pro shops mailboxes that started out like this. And we have, well, we meaning me, I don't employ gnomes, so it's just me spraying. It took a very long time. So when I say that I had to do each individual scale, and folks, for the record, there's thousands of them on this, um, it took a bit of time because what I wanted to do was portray depth give this yeah it's a mold it's a plastic mold but i really kind of wanted in a abstract way to give it a little bit more lifelikeness and the um i like the fins i like it i like everything about it i'm i'm pretty happy with how this came out um but i like the fins because i kind of thought out of the box on this stuff this is uh a kitchen broom that I kind of put together and uh, used some tape and then sprayed and it turned out pretty cool so I'm digging how it turned out it's got uh, a total of 13 stars on its side extra star on the eye for each side and I think the mailbox total has um, 36 altogether, and if you guys are fact finders and historians, yes, there was a 36 star flag. The only time and only president that ever served was not Lincoln because it was right after his assassination. So there was a 36 star United States flag uh, right around 1865, and Andrew Johnson, not Jackson, but Andrew Johnson, served under that flag. So it wasn't intentional that I did that, but when I counted all the stars on it, because I had originally, I'm like, oh, let me do 13 for the colonies. And then I realized that the I star made 14. I'm like, well, that's 28 per side. And then we did, uh, let's see, there's five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, so that makes, that makes 36, which is cool. It's super cool. Um, and I had a lot of fun doing it my other favorite if I can show it to you guys now that's that's zoomed all the way in but this down here 
I like how that turned out as well but I just I added some depth to it so I sprayed every single individual scale on this and and portrayed some depth and then of course it's red white and blue this is going to my friend Dirk Frackawack and the Buffalo Man in Kansas on his sprawling ranch at his uh, newly built can't even call it a man cave it's a cabin it's gorgeous I've been looking at pictures of it and uh, I hope your guests really enjoy this now he he's built a multiple acre pond can almost call it a lake and it's it's well taken care of and uh, someday I promise you I'm gonna get up there and fish it but in the meantime we got some lures to talk about and some patterns so let's get into that back over here at the finishing desk we've got quite a bit to go through um, pretty sure since last we talked I showed you guys this one certain certain I did so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on that if I didn't I apologize and you can shoot me a note in the comments and say hey you screwed up I, I didn't see that last time but I'm gonna pull it in a little bit closer for you guys I'm actually completely hands-free here um, I've got it up on the Manfrotto tripod today and I normally only use the tripod for stuff like pours and spray sessions and all that stuff and when I'm outside filming it's uh it's got my nikon on it but this morning only because it's raining and i just feel like doing something a little bit different i'm going to go through each lure with uh with a hands free so just try something a little bit different i'm going to try and bring this into the light as best i can this is a citrus gill this is all one order except for these three these three are a separate order so citrus gill in that 65 8a which is that duo pressing and what i'm doing here is i'm dropping the eyes in and gluing them in prior to spraying the bait so the eyes get done as a um, speck on there comes off um, the eyes get sprayed while the bait is in progress so and and this is what i'm talking about actually this is a good opportunity to use a little bit of prop as tutorial this is what i'm talking about right here turning over a clean bait making sure that your tape is completely covering that bill because it just looks cleaner it's just a good looking bait when you turn it over just saying this is going out to Trisha Ray. This is going to be uh, going to Virginia. And specifically, I made this for Lake Anna, which um, if you're familiar with Lake Anna in Virginia, you know that there's a power plant on one side of it. So there's warm water pretty much year round. Well, warm water, like yeah, 50s-ish. So there's always some decent bass. I've never fished that side specifically, but I have caught some big ones on there when I was there with Steve Carmen. And, um, this is a little bit of a modification on a Tennessee shad. It's got your traditional shad dot. It's got your green fading down into a white on the back, but I put a little bit of color on it for this time of year in the summer and then added just a little bit of that purple plum to it. Got some good match the hatch eyes in this. And that should that should do the trick I like the small ones and that's how I was taught to fish it and I've done very well there um, I've caught a couple over four I've caught some dinks there as well but it's it is a good it's a good venue if you're um, if you're just starting out in bass fishing or if you want to expand your your capabilities because there are some decent fish and we've got this on that holographic background which has taken forever to get in um, a lot of times you wait on stuff like that and you wait on stuff like that but when they run out we have to go overseas to uh, to the distributors and sometimes that just takes a little bit of time so really cool good bait there this is your everybody has it wake bait with that circuit board lip in a trout pattern really enjoyed starting to put this type of trout pattern on there I did it on a lipless 
um, actually on a, I think it was an Ozark Trails lipless holographic background. This one is not holographic, but really like how it turned out. These are seven millimeter eyes. Uh, and they work very well on these baits. You can get away with some of like the six. There's some that are just over six. They're odd sizes. They're not actual millimeters. They were pressed in uh, quarter fraction inches, fraction of inches. So usually your quarters are close to your sixes, but this is a little bit over that. So this is that seven millimeter fish skulls living eye in earth color. This is the earth color. It's a little bit more yellowish, a little bit less red. Their wind color's got a good bit of red in it, and also their fire, their fire color is mostly all red. But for a trout, they don't have a red eye. They have more of a yellowish, sometimes almost silver eye. I don't know. You guys have seen this a bunch of times, but we're gonna show it to you again. Because I just made this one. This is that beautiful, one of my favorites, one of y'all's favorites too, green sunfish. On an LJM Day 50 pressing, this is that Ozark. It's a deep red going flush down into a chartreuse with a little bit more deep red on the tail. These have just come off of the clear coat rack, so as soon as I'm done doing this video, we got to dress these up, get them out the door, because now we're into the last of this order. This is a distressed crappie. Put some different eyes on this. You can find this on the website at www.jugglebaits.com, which is pretty cool. Um, but this is on the holographic, which was requested for the order. And I also put some different eyes on that. So really like how it turned out. I've got those red stress veins underneath. So this looks like a seriously distressed fish. That's the whole purpose. But like how it came out. Lake Ontario. Also on a holographic. Well, most of these are, if not all of them, are on holographics. Some of the patterns, you won't be able to see the holographic pattern underneath as well, simply because the, the pattern requires several layers. But I always do what my customers request. If they want holographics, I will certainly give it to them. Um, and you can still see it. It's just not as prominent as some of this. Like, this is a multi-layer, so... You can see a little bit of that holographic image, like there you can see it. And you'll get that flash underwater. It'll refract off of the light, which is what you want. That's Lake Ontario pattern. Also on the website, as is, now this, you can see that there's the difference. When there's less layers and I'm able to do like a pearl or a transparent under layer or right, the spray right on top of that, you can really see the difference. So one thing you might want to consider when you're ordering Jekyll Baits is how much layering and how how the image is going to look. Holographics, uh, I get charged more for them. Therefore, unfortunately, or fortunately, that transfer of cost. And it's not that much. I think holographics are just a buck more on the website than the normal. But this really, this, this, uh, this natural crappie really looks good in this holographic image. That turned, that turned out real well. Happy with that. The Japanese beetle. You see a lot of them on rose bushes this time of year. Got that iridescent red, which is a color shifting paint. And again, on this one, you can see much less of the holographic underneath of it. That's okay because the pattern does, it, it gives you enough to where it'll give a little bit of reflection when this thing's moving through the water. I like these 1.5s, love the sound. It, it reminds me of the Excalibur BB sounds because that had a lot of, lot of BBs in them and their stuff. So there's your Japanese beetle. Slide these into view. And then on some of them, you really just want that, that holographic image to shine. 
So this is uh, this is an interesting color match. It is obviously it's a thread fin shad because it's got that blue hue to it. But I also blended in just a little bit of plum pearl, and then I've kind of I've gotten a little maybe a little bit addicted to this wicked blue green. You know what? I'm going to show this to you. Hang on just a second. This is the Wicked Detail Line Blue Green Color 58. It's a blue green and it's not supposed to be one of those um, color shifting paints, but depending on what your background is on this, it'll give you a blue hue, which I think that you're probably viewing more blue than you are green on this particular one. But watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and pull off a piece of paper. I'm going to show you what this looks like. Drop it on to a piece of paper. It is the coolest shade. And see, you can see that green in there start to come through. It's almost like a an ocean color of aqua but man this is a phenomenal detail color and it's dark enough to where if you're doing crawfish and you don't want to use black you really don't want to use something as dark as a, a black magenta you could probably get away with using this on one of those match the hatch colors just food for thought but i'm really really digging that color on a lot of those baits so this has got blue green on the on the face and on the tail a little bit and it's just a little bit different of a shade but boy man it just it's phenomenal and again this is one of those patterns where you can really let the holographic background the foiling do what it's supposed to do and that really makes this bait pop got two two european hornets these are so much fun to spray they're less time consuming. The more I spray these, the more you guys order these. These are both, every, everything that I'm showing you today is in order. Most times it is. As a matter of fact, I don't think that I've really sprayed anything that hasn't been in order in quite some time, months even. Maybe a couple of auction pieces or extra order pieces that I made an extra one because I'm like, oh, that'll, that'll be a good auction. Um, so yeah, Japanese or, or um, European Hornet. Very cool bait. Very loud bait. Great in stained water. Arkansas River Craw. That fluorescence on a holographic bait. Jets and eyes. Thank you, John keeping me stocked in eyes hog snatcher real basic um, fun bait to do but very effective Let's see that holographing Lake Martin red And what I'm doing here is I'm wrapping this bait before any paint goes on it at all. Um, if you need to seal anything along the top to kind of hide the foil strips, I'm using white, or in this case, it's black. You can see the black on the bottom. And But I'm leaving everything else completely clean and wrapping it just so you can get that holographic foiled image this is pumpkin seed, red-eyed pumpkin seed, this is baby garter snake, I haven't done one of these in a while and they're so cool, I love doing this pattern. Love the eyes on this as well. Juvenile or baby garter snake in a lipless. The reimagined Norfolk crawl. A 
little blood red on the bottom, black on the top, good bit of depth. On an LJMD50 pressing. Neon pumpkin seed. And when we say neon, it's all fluorescent colors. You've got that fluorescent yellow pop on the bottom. It is a holographic, again, all these are holographics. And then that orange into red fade. And this is a metallic blue that I've used on this. This is um, the Spectra Tex. Really good colors. A little tricky to use, but don't reduce them. So you have to spray them with a little bit higher pressure. And then last but certainly not least, the deep water crawl. So I'm going to boogie out of here. I've got to box these up, get these cleaned up, dressed up, and out the door in a great big bass mailbox up to Kansas. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. I'm going to be doing updates. I've got a spray session coming this week, which is a good one. It's it's going to be a two-part, so I got I get lots of questions. So the, the two questions that we're going to knock out is how do you do the money crawl? So I'm going to do a money crawl this week. And I'm also going to do um, a popper. Not the gill through popper, just the regular popper because I've gotten tons of questions lately. I guess after I did this one, I got a question on how do you put this into clear coat and not have all the clear coat pull up in here. So we're going to answer that this week for you guys. Um, that's going to be coming midweek probably, the spray session and the FAQs and questions and all that good stuff. Uh, I'm going to do my best to get that up by Wednesday or Thursday. So thanks for spending time on the channel. Thanks for hanging out at Jekyll Bates in the workshop with me this morning. Monday, Monday. But you know what? It's the start of a beautiful week because we all woke up breathing, didn't we? You guys have a great day, and I'll see you on the water or in the water, depending on how the hurricane does this week. <laughs> Happy casting. We'll talk to you soon. what that color looks like dry this is such a cool color seriously y'all wicked blue green just saying